it's Justine and today we are chatting about all things Apple Watch Series 3. Now the biggest difference between the new Series 3 Apple Watch is that it will now support cellular. And what that means is you're basically not going to need your phone. You will just need your watch to do all of the things that you would need your phone for. Like make calls, for instance. Text messages. You can even listen to streaming music, which is something that I'm really excited about. Another thing that is new is Siri will actually talk back to you. Previously, you would just get a response via text, but now because of the new processor that is in the Apple Watch Series 3, Siri will be able to respond to you. You won't even need to look at your phone. You watch your, your tiny phone on your arm. So cosmetically, the old watch and the new Series 3 is the exact same size. The only difference is the back heart rate sensor crystal is, and I quote, two pieces of paper thicker. Now I did get a chance to try it on and it did not feel any different at all. I did not even notice that this was bigger. I feel like two pieces of paper is extremely thin. And to think about all of the new things they have packed into the new watch, that's a pretty big advancement. Something that I thought was pretty cool is the biggest question was, well, where's the antenna gonna be if it's still gonna be the same form factor? The entire front face of the screen is the antenna. And these little green dots, demonstrated right here by my new friend that I met at the Apple event, that shows you that it is connected to cellular. They showed this amazing, inspirational, and a very emotional video during the keynote that showed all of these people who have used the Apple Watch for either the past year or the past two years and how it's changed their life. There was even an instance where the Apple Watch actually saved the wearer's life. They realized that their heart rate was much higher than it should have been for a resting heart rate when you're not doing any activity, and that can sometimes signify something is wrong. So with that, that allowed this person to be alerted instantly that, hey, I think I should probably go to the hospital. So obviously your heart rate is a very important thing to have being monitored constantly. It also plays a huge factor in fitness, and what I love about the new Apple Watch is they're going to be working together with a gym kit to allow you to sync your watch watch data and your gym equipment together. So for example, if you're running on a treadmill, that treadmill is gonna be able to more accurately say how long you've been running, your distance, your pace, all of those things. And a lot of times, especially on gym equipment, it's very hard for those things to be tracked by wearable devices because it doesn't really know what you're doing. You might be able to tell it, yeah, I'm on a treadmill, yeah, I'm on a stair step, but it doesn't actually know. The machine itself has the data of what task you just performed. So now all you have to do to be able to get that data right to your watch is tap and go. They also said that they're going to be having some support for snowboarders. I've never snowboarded before, so I'm not really sure all of the things that are gonna be going into that and what you guys would be looking for. They'll be able to monitor elevation, and I'm sure maybe there's sort of a setting in there that they can be like, hey, how fast was I going down this mountain? I'm not sure. But I feel like that information would be kind of interesting to me if I was snowboarding. I'm also not a big swimmer, but there are some new features for swimmers. They also did a really cool demonstration of this woman on a paddleboard in Tahoe, and they made a call to her, and the only thing that she was using in that that live keynote was her watch and it sounded really, really good. Brandon, I don't make many phone calls, but there's a lot of times when I take my dog for a walk that I like to still have my phone, but then I'm holding my phone, walking the dog, I'll have a water and then I have to pick up the dog's it's a lot of things. So if I'm just taking the dog for a simple walk, I will now just be able to take my watch and still be connected, still be able to get my text messages, my apps, and other sort of notifications that I normally wouldn't be able to get if I didn't have my phone with me. I'm a huge fan of being able to stream music from your watch. That's gonna be really cool. So using Apple Music, they said that you'll be able to stream more than 40 million songs. And think about that and put that in perspective. That's a, that's a lot of music. This is one of the new watch faces. It's a nice gold and it kind of matches the new iPhone 8 gold color. And it looks really, really good in person. This watch face is called Spicy Orange. It's so great! This is one of the new sport loop bands that they just introduced as well, and it's a new type of model that it's made of like this breathable fabric, so when you feel it, it kind of feels like Velcro, but like a really soft Velcro. It's kind of spongy, it has a little bit of pushback, I'm not really sure how to explain it. The Velcro is right here, so this allows you to pull it as tight as you can all the way around your wrist. Now I have a problem though because I have very small wrists, which I probably should hop down to the 30 because it would make a lot more sense, but I do like having the bigger screen. I'm basic. But I usually don't run into this issue of the watch bands being too big because most of the sport bands, they come with two different sizes. They come with a small medium and a medium large band, so you're able to adjust that to the size of your wrist. And I was at the Apple campus and I was so excited that I was like, I'm gonna treat myself and I'm gonna buy this Hermes Apple Watch band. The one that I thought I was getting was this loop band, but this loop band is only made for the 38. The 42 comes in the one that I was unboxing and I didn't know this at the time. So when I opened it, I was a little bit surprised because I was expecting that it was going to be the loop band. I thought that it wrapped all the way around, like, but I guess not. I was a little deceived by the display. So unfortunately, when I tried it on, I was like, man, this is really, really big. It's a little bit big. That's the problem with getting the 42 millimeter. 
And I put it on the tightest setting and everything and I wore it for a little bit and I was like, I have to return this because there's no way that I could justify spending this much money for an Apple Watch band that does not even fit. So my suggestion to you guys is if you are planning to get one of the more expensive watch bands, do try them on first, go to the Apple store, give it a shot because I don't want you to have the same problem that I had. While we're on the topic of watch bands, they also introduced a bunch of new colors of watch bands. I love being able to switch up my watch bands. I could care less about what I'm wearing. I care way more about what my watch band is, but since I've been wearing this Nike Sport Loop one, it's been my favorite. It's very breathable. It still does get a little bit sweaty, but it's way better than the ones without the holes. That's why I'm really excited about the Sport Loop because that is something that I feel like will absorb sweat. And you won't have to worry about being like, hmm, end of the day, I gotta loosen up my Apple Watch because my arm is sweating. In addition to the new gold face, they also have this gray ceramic. I'm a huge fan of the ceramic watch faces. I have the white one, which I'm sure many of you guys have watched me unbox here previously. I love the ceramic. It feels great on my wrist. It is a little bit heavier than the aluminum and it is a little bit more expensive. So by deciding which Apple Watch is right for you, I think what it really comes down to is price and do I want something a little bit smaller and lighter? And is it necessary to have LTE? I don't think it's 100% necessary to have LTE, especially if this is your first Apple Watch. But if this is your first Apple Watch, I think it's gonna be a really cool feature to have to really not have your phone. If you work in a job or for, say, a class, you will be able to have access to pretty much everything that you would have on your phone on your wrist. Let's take a look at some of the new watch bands that they introduced. This one here is my favorite. It is so beautiful. It is called the Fuchsia. It's a beautiful leather Fuchsia, but I feel like I'm probably gonna have that same issue that I have with this that I had with that Hermes version. The new Sport Loop. Here's some of the new colors. This flash looks awesome. Here it is, spicy orange. I love it. Electric pink, midnight blue, dark olive sport, seashell sport. I feel like that will probably get dirty. I've never had any problems with any of these white bands getting dirty because they are that silicone, so it's very easy to clean. But with this, I feel like it's more of a fabric. So, I mean, I would probably just throw it in the wash when I'm doing laundry. I don't know what will happen to it. I could probably do a test to see the outcome. So maybe I'll get the white, get it dirty, see if I can clean it and see what happens. So I can do a test for you guys to see if it's okay to throw your Apple Watch loop bands in the wash. People also tell you that you're not supposed to throw like tennis shoes in the watch, but all of my Nikes, I throw them in like every other week. And guess what? They're fine. Here's some of the new sport bands. We have a rose red, a blue sport band, the ultraviolet, dark olive, soft white. I like this fog sport band. That's a really good color. Pink, midnight blue, black. I'm still a really huge fan of the Nike sports bands. So here's a few of their new colors. They have the pure platinum and the black. Pretty sure they had this one before, but I still really like that look. This one looks to be like a dark blue. Here's a few of the woven nylon. These all look really great as well. There's really so many customizations that it's insane. Here's in the leather. Here's the Cosmos blue. There's my baby pink fuchsia. Some other colors. These all look really good. The modern buckle. I'm more of the sporty fan. And here's the Hermes leather. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. But here's the problem. 38 millimeter only, I did not know. Man, they all look great. Now the real question is, how much are these things gonna cost? So we're gonna look here, and this is the breakdown of all of the models that they have available. You can get it with GPS or the GPS and cellular. We've got this Series 3. This is the silver aluminum with the fog sport band. That's a really nice look. Like, that looks super slick. Of course, the rose gold is by far one of my favorite colors ever, although I'm probably going to be getting the ceramic one again. So to differentiate between the Apple Watch Series 3 with cellular and the previous versions without cellular, they decided to put a red dot on the crown. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I do not like the red dot at all. Red is my least favorite color. I think red is a really great accent color, but in this sort of scenario, I don't think it is at all. Mostly because there are so many different colors of Apple Watch bands and different combinations, and some of those things, as a designer myself, I would never put red with some of these colors. Like, it's just like, it's like a contrasting color, and it's just, I am not a fan at all. But, with that being said, I'm still gonna get one anyway. I do think that it was smart on their part to put something cosmetic that would differentiate the two, but I feel like the red, is there nothing else that you could have come up with? Like there's gotta be something, something else that you could have done besides the red. Either way, here's that lineup. Here's the silver aluminum case with the GPS. They've also got the rose gold, the space gray, space gray aluminum. This gold with that band looks incredible. They also have some of the Nike watch series. So here they are here. Here's the silver aluminum case with pure black. Oh my gosh, the space gray, the silver aluminum, space gray aluminum. Oh geez, you get the point. And then we have the Hermes Apple Watch series. These ones are super expensive because of obviously the brand and the leather bands. Then we have the Apple Watch Edition. So that brings us here to the white ceramic and the gray ceramic. 
and these both start at $12.99. I'd be curious to see what that number combination is of the Apple Watch faces and the bands and the GPS and the cellular. Like how many different combinations can you make with all of these? Because it's gotta be pretty high. Another thing that I thought was really cool is they announced this Air Power. So it's kind of like a power wireless connecting match. So you can put all of your devices onto it and it will charge them at night. Which I say at night because I feel like that's most of the time that you're gonna be using that. When I'm on the go or during the day, I usually have like a Mophie charger with me and I don't usually charge my Apple Watch on the go. One of the things that I forgot to mention is all of the watches that were at the Apple event were running Watch OS 4. And there's a lot of new features in Watch OS 4, which makes it pretty exciting. I never did install the beta on my watch. I thought about it, but I think I'll just wait at this point for the actual thing to come out. And if you guys can't tell, I'm a huge Apple Watch fan. I wear mine almost every day, everywhere I go. I love dressing it up and dressing it down. I have worn it so many times on red carpets. <laughs> Usually sometimes it's, you know, with an outfit that you shouldn't wear an Apple Watch with, but I will wear it. And a lot of people ask me, what do I use my Apple Watch for mostly? And it's weird because I don't really know if there's one set thing that I use it mostly for. I feel like it integrates seamlessly into my life. It, it's sort of second nature. I just kind of look at it. I see what my schedule is. I go do said activity. I love being able to use it for navigation when I'm driving and in my car. It kind of gives you that little Hey, the gentle tap of you have to turn soon, which is great because I'm not very good with directions. It's also great for when I'm in a city and walking. I can just have those walking directions on my wrist and I don't have to have my phone out. So if you've ever been skeptical about the Apple Watch, I think now is the time that they have worked out all of the bugs, all of the kinks, and they have finally figured out the place for this thing. Anyway, this was a very long video and I talked a lot and I probably could keep talking, but I'm gonna end it here. And as soon as I get my hands on one of the Apple Watches, I will make a video about it and I'll let you guys know my full review and all of my thoughts. But for now, I'm gonna go edit this video. I'll see you later. I can't believe I still edit my own videos. What am I thinking? <laughs> I'd have a lot more free time to play Destiny if I didn't edit. But I like it. <laughs>